Hello, I'm Christy Martino, a sales and applications engineer at Modolithics. Today we're going to talk about how Modolithics models can be used within Keysight Technologies RF Pro EM environment. Let's begin. There's no doubt that many of today's designs require electromagnetic or EM analysis. For designs that include surface mount components, it's often necessary to perform an EM circuit co-simulation. This type of simulation combines circuit analysis of the component models with EM analysis of the surrounding interconnect elements. In this video, we'll demonstrate how effective EM circuit co-simulations can be performed by using Keysight Technologies RF Pro EM environment combined with Modolithics microwave global models for RLC components. Let's begin by talking a little bit about RF Pro. RF Pro is an EM environment dedicated to RF microwave circuit design that's included within several Keysight Pathwave ADS packages. The goal of RF Pro is to simplify EM analysis, which of course ultimately simplifies EM circuit co-simulation. Modolithics microwave global models can be used very easily within RF Pro. To demonstrate, we'll look at a low-pass filter design example. Let's begin. Shown here is a schematic in ADS of the low-pass filter design. This filter is designed using a 4 mil thick Rogers 4350B substrate. You can see the corresponding substrate element from the Modolithics substrate library. This library contains many of today's popular substrates. The filter is designed for a passband to 1.5 GHz. For the inductors, we're using Modolithics microwave global models for the Coilcraft 0402CS inductor series. For the capacitors, we're using microwave global models for the AVX UQCL series. For both part series, the component body size is 0402. Now in this case, we want to simulate the component solder pads within the EM simulator rather than within the models themselves. To do this, we'll want to set the sim mode parameter of all models to 2. This setting removes solder pad effects from the electrical model. Now as we'll see later, the component pins for EM circuit co-simulation will be located at the edges of the component bodies rather than the edges of the solder pads. We'll also need to set the pad mode parameter to the correct setting. The pad mode parameter controls whether or not the solder pads render in the layout. Remember, this parameter has no effect on the model simulation. It only affects the layout. Be aware that there are three different pad mode settings. Zero simply defaults to the sim mode setting. Note that for sim mode 2, the pads are removed from the layout by default. Pad mode 1 includes the pads in the layout, while pad mode 2 removes them. For this example, we want to set the pad mode parameter to 1 for all models. Again, this setting forces the solder pads to be included in the layout. Including the solder pads in the layout allows them to be analyzed within the EM simulator, which is what we want to do in this case. Now in some scenarios, the designer may want to implement custom solder pads that don't correspond to the standard pad topology within the model. If we did want to do that here, we would need to set the pad mode parameter to 0 or 2. Either of these settings would result in the pads being removed from the layout when using sim mode 2. We would then create our own solder pads. However, for this example, we just want to use the default solder pad configurations. Therefore, we can set pad mode to 1 for all models. For more on solder pad configurations, check out the Modolithics 5 minute feature video titled Advanced Pad Configurations. Now let's view the filter in layout mode by selecting window and then layout in the toolbar. So first we'll set the layout connectivity options. We can do this by selecting tools 
and then set connectivity options. Alternatively, we can do this globally by going to the main ADS window and selecting Options, Preferences, Connectivity. Now looking at our options, it's recommended to enable net-based connectivity to maintain the name nets and synchronization between the schematic and layout. We'll also select Calculate all flight wires between grounds. Next, we'll go to Schematic from the toolbar and then select Design Differences. This will allow us to build the layout from the schematic. We'll click Update over here, and now we can place all the schematic elements in the layout. This includes the component models, microstrip interconnects and vias, and the input and output pins. Let's start placing our elements. It's easy to snap all the elements together. And then after we're done, we have the final layout of the filter. Remember, we'll also need to configure the substrate. Again, the substrate is 4 mil thick Rogers 4350B. We're now ready to launch RF Pro. Let's go to Tools, RF Pro, and then we'll select New. This takes us to the RF Pro user interface. Let's configure this so that we can perform our simulation. First, we can see the input and output pins up here in the project interface. Down here, we have our setup interface. Let's open up full EM analysis. Now we need to drag the input and output pins from the project interface down to where it says ports in the setup interface. Now that we've set up our ports, we need to make sure that the component models are specified as circuit elements. To do that, we'll need to right click the model up here and then select Change Component Role followed by To Circuit. Now, notice that when we right click a model, we see this option called Component Includes Area Pins in Net. Selecting this option enables the component solder pads to be included in the EM analysis. Since that's what we want to do here, we'll go ahead and select this option for both the AVX capacitor model and the Coilcraft inductor model. Now let's just take a quick look at the pin locations for all the components in the design. Notice how the pins are not located at the edges of the solder pads. Rather, they're actually located on the solder pads to correspond with the locations of the edges of the components mounted on the pads. This is a result of setting the model sim mode parameter to 2. So now we need to select both models up here and drag them down here to where it says component models. We're almost ready to simulate, but first we need to select options to configure the EM analysis. For this example, we want to simulate over a frequency range of 50 MHz to 8 GHz. We'll select the simulator we want to use, which in this case is Momentum Microwave. Note that we can further configure our simulation by specifying the mesh settings and more. In this case, we'll just leave the default settings. We can now simulate by selecting Run. After that finishes, we can expand this results selection and then we'll select Generate Subcircuit. We'll then be asked if we want to create a view in the existing cell or create a new one. We'll go ahead and choose Create View in Existing Cell. This will add a new schematic to our cell called Schematic Full EM Analysis. We'll also see an associated symbol called Symbol Full EM Analysis. Let's take a look at this new schematic. Here you'll notice we see each of the component models from the original filter schematic. The models still retain the same settings that we specified earlier. Down here, we'll see this element that contains the EM analysis data from the simulation we just performed. So we have our component models and our EM analysis data. 
Now the nice thing here is that we don't have to manually connect the component models to the element that represents the EM analysis data. That's because that's already been automatically done. So now we can go ahead and perform a final EM circuit co-simulation. Remember that we'll just need to add a substrate element to this schematic. So let's add that substrate definition for the 4 mil Rogers 4350B substrate here. Now we need to create a new schematic and then we'll just drag that symbol into this schematic. Let's add our port terminations and then we'll configure the S parameter simulation. Again, we'll simulate from 50 megahertz to 8 gigahertz. Now when we select our element and then select choose view for simulation, we have a couple different options. Choosing schematic lets us perform a circuit analysis of the original schematic. Selecting schematic full EM analysis lets us perform an EM circuit co-simulation of our design that incorporates the EM analysis data. What's nice about this is we can easily switch between performing a circuit simulation and an EM circuit co-simulation. This is helpful if you want to compare the results to one another. Let's compare both the circuit simulation and EM circuit co-simulation results to the measured data. Shown here is one of the low-pass filters that was built and tested. Here we see the circuit simulation results along with the measured data. S11 is on the left and S21 is on the right. The solid traces represent the circuit simulation results while the dash traces represent measured data of three different filters. When we look at S21, we see that the circuit simulation accurately predicted the in-band performance. However, the circuit simulation did not predict the out-of-band performance very well. So now let's go back to the final schematic we just looked at, and let's change the simulation view to schematic full EM analysis. Again, this allows us to perform an EM circuit co-simulation. Let's simulate this and take a look at our results. Now, the solid red traces represent the EM circuit co-simulation results, while the dash traces again represent the measured data. We see good agreement between the EM circuit co-simulation results and the measured data. And when we look at S21, we see that the out-of-band prediction is much more accurate compared to the circuit simulation results. So we can safely say that we validated the overall EM circuit co-simulation model results. So in summary, combining the RF Pro EM platform with Monolithics models allows for an easy way to perform accurate EM circuit co-simulations. If you're interested, please contact us.